Good morning and thank you for joining us today at St. Paul United Methodist Church. We would like to thank Reverend Brent Webster for being with us during this Advent season while Pastor Horn is away on his vacation. We certainly enjoyed and appreciate your leadership. Thank you very much. Pastor Horn will be back in the office this week beginning Monday, December 21st. Welcome back, Pastor. And please join us Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock. We will be having our Christmas Eve service online. We light this cam candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O oh God, make us ready for the coming of Jesus, our hope and joy. O oh come, O oh come, Emmanuel. Let us sing our opening hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. Our call to worship, I will read the light print and you can read the dark print. Come, take your hands and stand with us beneath the starlit sky. While winds play on their magic harps, a secret to lullaby. Come, lend your ears and hear with us the songs the angels sing. Of peace on earth, goodwill to men and of the cradled king. Come, lift your eyes and look upon us, a radiant star. That led the wise men from the east to Bethlehem afar. Come, bend your knee and kneel with us before the Holy One. To, to worship, all, worship with, the, with the adorning Lord, love God's Lord, own begotten Lord. Son. As we enter into a time of prayer, let us keep in our prayers those who um, have been suffering difficult times in the days past. Reverend Horn and his family with the loss of a member of their extended family, with those who have become ill or are continuing to suffer with illness, for those who are suffering the hardship of economic decline due to this pandemic, for those who are far away from home and unable to be with family and friends this holy season. For those who must work while the rest of us rest. Let us spend the next few moments in personal prayer as we remember these individuals and others that are close to us and lift them up to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our loving Father, we come before you as your children, unworthy of your love, but yet we celebrate the fact that you have called us and accepted us as your own. We thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of our sins, for the guidance of your Holy Spirit, and for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we always be mindful of the task that he calls us to, to love and care for our neighbor, to honor and worship you, and to reach out and help those who are hurting. We pray, Father, that those who are hurting might find relief this holy season. We pray, Father, that families can come together in a safe and healthy way to celebrate their love for each other and their love for you. We pray, Father, that this country and this world can soon be 
back to her semblance of normalcy as we begin to see the rollout of a vaccine, which we pray will be quick and efficient. We pray until that time comes, Father, that we will do the wise and proper things to keep all people healthy. Father, guide us in doing your will, that we might always be mindful that we are your servants. We are the ones who build the kingdom of God upon this earth, following your directions. And now, Father, we offer our prayers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me as we sing our praise hymn in the bleak midwinter. If you would like to make a financial contribution to this ministry, you may do so in one of several ways. You can click on the Donate Now button and give a one-time gift or a recurring gift 
using a bank or credit card. You can text the amount of your offering directly to the church using our Give by Text phone number 248-283-4991. Or you can mail your gift directly to the church. We give thanks for whichever way you choose to give. We will now receive the gift of music by Judy White. Let us offer unto God our tithes and offerings. God bless you. Special music. Thank you very much, that was beautiful. We will now have our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Please stand.
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, as we come before you with our humble hearts, an open heart, giving what we can. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and ask that you may bless these gifts that we give in your name and for your purpose that they may be used. We pray during this Advent season that we give to those we know, to those we don't know, and we just ask, Heavenly Father, for the sincerity to give to all people in all things that we have that you have given to us. In Jesus' name, we ask that you bless these tithes and offerings. Amen. Join me in the hymn of preparation, O Little Town of Bethlehem. We will now have our scripture today from Luke 1, verses 47 through 55. How my spirit rejoice in God my Savior, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. 
He shows mercy from generation to generation to all that fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. The word of God for the people of God. It's a pleasure to be with you again for this worship service. Reverend Horn will be back with you for the next worship service you have, and I'm sure you'll celebrate with him all of this holy season. One of the things we as United Methodists like to do, that is to sing. We sing to share our faith. I, for one, cannot carry a tune, so I have to turn off the microphone when I do sing, or else I'm afraid the police will come and arrest everybody for disturbing the peace which wouldn't be very nice. But we sing during good times and difficult times. We sing at funerals, we sing at Easter morning and Christmas Eve worship services. We sing just to celebrate and we love to sing as a, as a community of faith. And I'm sure that when we are back together in our individual congregations and are able to sing without mask on, the singing will be joyful and will be powerful. The scripture lesson this morning is about a song that Mary sang. She was visited by the angel Gabriel, who told her that she was favored among all of God's children, that she would conceive and give birth to a son who would be the long-awaited Messiah. She was told also that her cousin Elizabeth, whom she knew was well beyond the age of having children, was in the sixth month of her pregnancy. Mary's response might be one that we give. How is this possible? First of all, she's not married. Second of all, Elizabeth is too old. And in her society, these things just didn't result in babies. But the angel replies that nothing is impossible to God. Sometime after learning what was going to happen, Mary goes off to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who lives in the hill, hill country. And when the two women meet, the baby that Elizabeth is carrying leaps for joy. And Elizabeth says to Mary, why should I be honored for, by a visit from the mother of my Lord? Without really knowing the, about the child Mary is carrying, Elizabeth senses that this child is special, that he is the Messiah. At this point, Mary sings or says the words that we have come to know as the Magnificat. Some scholars believe that this song in a slightly different version was, said, was sung for decades and, and centuries by the Hebrew people. Some people feel that this was sung all the way back to Abraham's time. For they had been looking, they'd been waiting, they'd been dreaming about the day that God would send a Messiah to them, a Savior, one who would free them from political, economic, and religious abuse. We know that their, the message from God was that he would make Abraham's father or Abraham's family a great nation, that he would establish on the throne of Israel, a descendant of Abraham. At first, that was David, but we know that he was really talking about Jesus of Nazareth, who is of the house and lineage of David and Abraham. We know that from Scripture, the people of Israel had been looking for a long time for that coming Messiah. We know the words very familiar from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 5 through 7 where the prophet says, for a son has been given, has been born for us, a son has been given to us, and dominion has been laid on his shoulders. And this is the name that he has been given. 
wonderful counselor, mighty God, eternal father, prince of peace. This was the hope and the dream of the Hebrew people. This is the story that Mary was singing about, for it's the story of her faith and her heritage. Let's return to the story of Mary singing this song that she sings after she is greeted by her cousin Elizabeth and whose own child leaps for joy in her womb. At this point, Mary might have been thinking about what it was that Gabriel had said to her about being a favored one. Think for a moment about why Mary is favored, why she is blessed. My guess is that because she had a very simple response to God's request that she be the mother of the Messiah. She said, yes, Lord, I will do this. I will be the Messiah's mother. I will do as you ask. I will do as you will. And so Mary goes forth in this song. This song is a song of hope, a song of anticipation, a song looking to the future. But as Mary sings it, it's not to the future she's looking. She is singing a song of God having fulfilled his promise, fulfilled the dream of the Hebrew people. For if you pay attention to the song, the verbs that Mary uses are not future tense. It's not God will show his strength. It's not God will scatter the proud. But it is God has shown his strength. God has scattered the proud. God has brought down the powerful. God has lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good tidings, with good things. God has sent the rich away empty. Not future tense, but what God has already done. For in Mary's faith, God has fulfilled his promise of the Messiah in her child. Mary doesn't know what's going to happen to her son. She doesn't know what's going to happen in the future. But we know that at this point in time, she has faith and confidence that God has fulfilled his promise and given the people this long-awaited Messiah who is going to help them set the, the balance of everything equal. It's going to take the shackles off religious, economic, and political persecution. It's going to make their lives as God desired them to be, going all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You know, the Magnificat was not always a popular song for people to sing. Not all governments in the world appreciated the message of hope that it proclaims. There was a time during the British rule of India when the British government would not allow this song to be sung in churches. It was too radical. It might actually cause the people to rise up and rebel against British rule. Well, that didn't stop the people of India, the Christians in India, for they went up on the rooftops and they proclaimed this song because to them it was a song of hope, of a better tomorrow. In Argentina, there was a time between 1976 and 1983 called the Dirty War, where mothers in that country posted copies of the Magnificat all over the cities, towns, and villages. Wherever they could post them, they posted them for people to see. The ruling military government did not like that, for they saw the song as providing, proclaiming, celebrating too much hope and they feared that it would have disastrous effects for their military rule. This song that Mary sang is a song of hope, but it is also a song that calls us into action, that calls us to do God's work and God's will within this world that we live. It's not just celebrating what's happened, but what you and I can do for in this song, it calls us to lift up the lowly and help them to rise up to, 
to the image, to the vision that God has for each of his children's lives. To transform people's lives from hopelessness to hopefulness. Last year about this time, there was a commercial on TV that I enjoyed. It was an Amazon commercial. It was of a young woman who worked in one of their warehouses, and she said that she was in the process of taking college classes, and that Amazon was paying for these classes so that she could, and she could not believe this was true, she thought it was insane, so that she could quit her job at Amazon and go get a better paying job somewhere else. She thought this was ridiculous, but they're trying to lift up their employees and give them a better life. And that is what God is calling us to do, to lift people up and help them find ways to transform their lives so that they are better, more productive, richer in the spiritual things of life. This is also a song that calls us to help feed the hungry. Now, people are both hungry physically and spiritually. This is a song that says, don't ignore the needs of the world, but do what you can to help feed people. It might be donating food to a food pantry, money to a soup kitchen, helping someone grow in their faith. Hunger is not something that happens just at Christmas time or in the winter. It's a fact of life 12 months out of the year, and it is a, a fact of life that we can work to alleviate if we would just open our hearts and our minds to the needs of people in our world. This song also calls us to be willing and able to say, here I am, Lord, I am your servant. I will do according to your will. Now, these three things that this song calls us to do, this is probably the hardest, because if we tell God, yes, I will do your will, he's probably going to come in with his Holy Spirit and transform our lives in ways that we never imagined. He may lead us off into a path that we never, never thought we could do, all to serve his kingdom and to serve his children. But yet, as Christians we are called to allow God to transform our lives so that we can be his instruments to build his kingdom upon this earth. There's a story during World War II of a town in Europe that had a statue of, of Jesus and that because of the, the war, the, the battle in their city, the statue had lost its hands. And as they were restoring the village, the question was asked, what do we do with the statue? It has no hands. Do we put new hands on it? And someone said, no. We put it up the way it is without its hands. For we, the people of God, the children who follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we are his hands. We do his work. This simple song that Mary sang, celebrating the birth the future birth of her son, who would be the Messiah, is a song calling us to be God's servants in our world, to be his hands, to do his work, to create his kingdom upon this earth. For God has come. His Messiah is here. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, lives and moves among us as we open up our hearts to his will and to his word. So let us be like Mary. Let us say yes, Lord, when God calls us and asks us to do his work. Amen. Please join us in the hymn of the first Noel. Thank you. Yeah. 
We will now sing our closing hymn, Shalom to You. May the grace and peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and all the days to come. Amen.